The New York Tales premieres today as a recording. Mm-hmm. Apparently big 24-hour marathon of the first episode. Uh, I haven't got to watch it yet, but we'll do so shortly. Eventually. I'm, I'm seeing uh, good good reviews of it, so that's good. Yep. <laughs> Does that worry? It's going to be crap. Yeah. <laughs> but, All this hype. Yeah, but apparently it's actually pretty good, so... um. Looking forward to that. Yeah, looking, and I guess the rest of the series will be showing up in September, so woohoo on that. Uh, anyway, we're not DuckTales podcast, though. We're actually about ponies, so uh, let's get to that. Yes, hello, and welcome to Pony 411. This is episode 192 for the week of August 13th, 2017. I am Nemesis, and joining me is Alcatraz. E. Yes. Quite a bit to talk about this week, actually. Um, we got our usual news, of course. We have a new uh, fan thing. The Anthology 6 has come out. It has. Yes. Uh, a couple more Quest Your Girl shorts, and of course, the new episode, Fame and Misfortune, followed with uh, some fan content, including music and a fanfic. Yes. Yes, indeed. A lot of things to get through, so... Uh, not as well as last week, though. No, no, it's not, it's not, not, also not as bad as the week after Chalkon. Yeah. And, anyway. Probably should go ahead and get started. So, we'll dive right into the news. And if you want to follow along, go to pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. It's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. So we're going to go ahead and start with conventions. And that will start with Hasbro. Has fully revealed the contents of the Hascon exclusive MLP box. And it's, well... It has stuff in it. It has stuff in it. Let's see. A brushable. Looks like uh, the, the uh, scene ones. The ones with the printing on the side. A uh, little plush, possibly. Ju- I'm not sure if it's just Dash or it's just plush in general. Some cube thing. Oh, it's a stickums. Uh, right, a little cup, s- a cup of some sort, a book, the friends and foes book. Uh, it's for young kids. A play pack. I think it's one of those mini comic things. A shirt, which I remember the shirt is for children. Yes. And then it looks like a notebook and a pen. Yes, that plushie looks like one of the new. Yeah. Hasbro line Sea Pony. Plushies. It's smaller. Yeah. But one of the sea pony ones. Yep. So not a whole lot, I guess. But it's well, kind of neat. But yeah. But it's, I recall it's like twenty bucks anyway. So it's like you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Sure. Whatever. Anyway, moving on. Cider Ponyville Cider Fest has announced their community guests and charity partner. And see the community guests. They are Nazagoring. Let's see. Uh, Chocolate Pony, Lachlan O'Neill, and Brony Brewer. Those are the guests they have announced so far, and that they're. Uh, Charity. The, the, the charity we're partnering with is Generations Against Bullying. So there's that. Yep. Nightmare Nights has announced Nick Confalone. And Chequestria has a new promo for the 2017 con. It's very well Tron and stuff. That seems to be a thing now. Yeah, Brony Can's doing their mainframe yep. thing. And, I yeah. can do the mainframe. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Anyway, in fandom news, when Doors 3 has actually been announced. Yes, they're looking for people to submit their little animations. There's mm-hmm. all the rules and things are in the show note link. It, it's a video. It's a video, yep. And talks all about it. So go watch that if you're interested. Mm-hmm. In merchandise news, thankfully not a lot this week. Yeah. <laughs> the first, because yeah, I think everything like, dumped on us in like, last week is movie stuff. Uh, first images of the MLP Connects Tinker Toys have appeared. And there's, let's see, I believe there's a... Rare, a rarity, uh, or is it? It's Dash, Rarity, and Fluttershy. They're kind of simple, but it's Tinker Toys, so of course they're simple. Yeah, they're for kids. Yeah, and a Walmart exclusive Play-Doh pirate ship is out. Yes, much it, like your pirate ship, except more Play-Doh-y. I yeah, believe the it, the uh, balloon is actually just cardboard on this or something. Yeah, it, it's a much smaller, reduced version of the swashbuckler. Yep. Pirate ship set thing. Yeah, it looks like everything piratey from the movies exclusive to Walmart. That's what it looks like. I think there's been a couple, but mostly, yeah. That yeah, a couple that might not be, but but most of it's been Walmart exclusive. Yeah, like finding out. Yes. 
And more sea pony styling heads have appeared. I've actually seen one in person. They're actually quite large. Um, yes, more. The, I believe it's um, Pinky and Dash as well. Because I've seen the Rarity in store. I was actually at Toys R Us yesterday and I saw a Rarity. It's uh, about football sized. So, pretty good size. Huh. Well. MLP and Transformers, fidget spinners and cubes are now officially a thing. Fidget spinners. Yep. They're official ones. We've seen those weird ones on Amazon, but official ones by Hasbro are now being released. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah, and the fidget cubes as well. The fidget cubes are actually kind of cool. No, it's different. Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) So that's the thing. Um, Yep. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Fidget spinners. Uh, official ones. Images of the MLP pirate plushies we mentioned last week have now appeared on Toy Wiz. And yes, it is just the uh, fairly basic ones they've been doing. Yeah, they're, they're they're pretty simple. Yeah, it looks like a lot of it, though, is just uh, very... Uh, I guess they like, can cheap out a little bit in that sometimes they don't have to have entire mains now. Yeah. But I don't think they're... They're Walmart they're the ex- smaller ones, though. That they're also not walmart ex- exclusive pirate stuff i don't think these are walmart exclusive i don't know they could well, be because it's toy whiz well actually they might be t- walmart yeah because they're t- it's toy whiz toy whiz will just grab stuff they from will. other places and sell at a much higher price yes um, i might have to look for them yeah. but it yeah. depends on how much they are in store probably like 10 bucks something like that uh funko pop sea ponies will be heading out to zing pop culture in australia we talked about those a little bit last week, but uh, yeah. So Australians, if you want those, they're coming. In comic news, iTunes has a preview of movie prequel number three. And yes, it is Capper. Not surprising, because that's, that's where the fine. second where the one last episode went. <laughs> left us. <laughs> Cluster Girls news. Yes, the Cluster Girl D specials DVD magical movie night is out. And apparently it is super bare bones. As in, it's literally just the specials. No commentary, no extras, nothing. And apparently, other people have actually this is a this is actually a thing not just on the DVD but the di- digital version as well. Um, Mirror Magic's transfer screwed up. Oh, it's super washed out. Oh, it's just Mirror Magic. Other two are fine. Someone screwed up somewhere at the master copy or something. Because the broadcast version is, looks a lot better apparently. That is weird. Yep. Oops. Like no one checks that. And the Mad Twine short has been uploaded to Hasbro's official YouTube channel. So there's that. If you haven't already watched it, um, again, that was a very, eh, short. Friendship's Magic News. The MLP Movie Twitter has revealed new main six po- movie posters, and there's a chance to win them. Yep. You have to just go check that out, and they tell you exactly what you got to do. Yeah. And the rules you have to follow. Follow the rules. Actually, very neat little posters, too. They are pretty cool. Very, uh... Right. And stylized. Yes, very much so. And Josh Haber may be returning as a story editor. Co-story editor. Still. Yes, I know. You're mm. not exactly a fan of him as an editor. No, he does not. It's just kind of the, ooh, that's a bit of a type killer. August 8th has come and gone, and the first half of season 7 did not appear on Netflix like it was told. we were told it would. Yes. Which is um interesting. A little unfortunate, too. A little weird. Apparently, Netflix doesn't know what the hell was going on anyway. Yeah. Cause, and yeah. I also know the uh, Question Girl specials. Remember, those were supposed to hit Netflix before the uh, they aired on TV, and they never hit Netflix. So I don't know what's going on there. Netflix needs to get their act together. I don't know if it's Netflix or Hasbro. Someone's messing Someone up. Someone needs to get their act together. I don't know. People are worried. Like, Hasbro's go- Is Hasbro banning ban- ban- out Netflix? No, apparently Hasbro said, no, we're not going to pull things from Netflix. We're intent on keeping our no, deal the, in place as long as it's as long as it's you know they don't pull a disney yeah. disney's pulling all their stuff from yeah, Netflix. I know. be a couple more years hopefully we can just persuade them not to do that yeah anyway Trey, uh, daniel ingram said that season eight will have more songs than usual and that some will use the same orchestra from the movie woohoo yeah i mean there's other stuff too but we already knew that thing like well there's going to be multiple songs in the movie, like we all knew that. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of songs. Um, in the movie. And else, not surprisingly, as I su- we suspected, the reason there's so few songs this season is because he's been busy with the movie. <laughs> Everyone kind of knew that, but this is just confirmation that yeah, that's the case. 
because I believe I think that they think that before the season came out that there he confirmed like five songs total for the entire season we've seen I think three something like that I don't know I have to go through and the, start counting um, best friends till the end of time the Big Mac song and perfect pair those three I think I think those are the three songs and you had seen. like a catchy song yeah I think there's only three head. so that's three out of five we got two left for the season. And a promo for Triple Threat has aired. Yes. And it's got Thorax in it. Kind <laughs> of like we already knew. Yeah, and Ember in it. Like <laughs> The shirts heard... don't ever, the little previews don't ever really reveal much. Of course, they're like seconds long. They're actually yeah. less because there's still bumpers and crap. So, um, that's the news. That's the news. Nothing hard-hitting, really. Nope, nothing real big because all the big stuff already hit. Last week. Moving on. First part of our discussion, things. Yes. The new Ponies Anthology came out. Yes. Yes, it premiered in BronyCon, and it they just released it on YouTube. So, yeah, the, the new Anthology 6, it's um, a little over an hour long, at about hour four minutes. Something like that. They were out right about. It's, once again, it's an anthology, so m- multiple people working on it. Um, And because of that, once again, it's very much hit and miss yeah i mean there's a lot of course no of course memes and whatnot of course because well, obviously what they do that's, that's, that's kind of the point <laughs> I mean, of the whole thing yeah i mean it, 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 a lot of it's pretty funny it, i mean it really is um but there is some stuff that's just either a didn't get it or b just why yeah some of them are just like okay that was a thing some yeah. of them uh, it's i didn't get but i could tell there were references to things i just didn't know so i can't really <laughs> I can't really take any points off of yep. that. But yeah, there were a lot of funny points. There, mm-hmm. there were. Yeah, there were. I think some of the standout ones, um, I think the ending in particular was actually not just, I'm not talking about that part yet. I'm talking about the uh, the, the, the clue stuff. Where it's like, that. how about a different ending? <laughs> and like that, I was like, oh, hey, clue. I haven't seen that in forever. Let me watch that again. I don't think I've actually seen that. It's basically this movie is an example of how to actually adapt a board game into a movie right. Oh, I mean Battleship wasn't right. Sure, Clue is actually really funny, but um, you should watch it if you haven't. There was uh, let's see, what is the intro was? Which what did they do for the intro this? Time? Oh, they did a very much a horror. Yeah, it was like a tw- thing. For yeah, the, like a zombie, intro this time. zombie horror. First time was Kanye, thing. second time was uh, video games, third time was uh, Paper Mario, fourth time was a thing. <laughs> it didn't have an intro because it was very different. Fifth was uh, that saxophone thing, and this time it's horror, yeah. they It was actually pretty creepy. <laughs> yes, it was. And there's also the, there's the uh, you wouldn't, you know, the whole... You wouldn't ask what a brony is. <laughs> Get out while you still can. Get out while you still can. If you're watching the anthology, it's already too late. <laughs> yeah, if you're already here. Uh, yeah, so they, they did riff on other people's work and throughout it, uh, particularly in the opening stuff, because it was kind of necessary for that particular part. Um, there was some more um, Argo Damon. Oh, yeah, the, the Twilight t one was definitely... Yeah. Argo stuff is always top notch on animation. He he's mm. a master when it comes to source filmmaker. Mm. There was what's his face? The guy who did the boxing. Oh, Deadly name. Comics. Deadly Comics is what it was. Uh yeah, he did Had a couple quite things a few there. Of them. He did uh, one of them I really it was it wasn't funny, it was just well, just really good. Just, just uh, yeah, the one with Featherweight. Yeah, Featherweight doing camera stuff. It was that pretty was, nice. That had to be a reference to some like song oh, yeah, or anime I mean, or something using a like song. that. But it was using a song, so obviously. But uh But it was really well done. Yeah, and once again more Rick and Morty references, of uh course. Gravity Falls, Steven yep. Universe. There was that one that was like this huge combination of me <laughs> of references all in one. Yeah. That also reference back reference one of the older anthology ones. Yeah. Was it supposed to be humorous? Oh. Well, there was that one too. Yeah. I'm glad they. I guess I'm glad. I guess they figured out that that wasn't very well received. Yeah, that over just, just super overly long, long and fart stupid joke in the in that one. Yeah, an overly long fart. It's supposed to be humorous. Yeah, it's supposed was, to be. It just didn't work. Well. Yeah. There's several Futurama things. I was not expecting the Futurama stuff, but okay, cool. I did like it though. A lot of references to nuclear explosions. Mm, yes. Mm. Yes. 
Mm, well timed. Uh. Well timed. There was another <laughs> interestingly timed one. Yes, let's just say that. Right. Sent Starlight to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Perfect. That's how it should have ended. Where are you going to send her? New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> and it looks just like the apocalyptic way. That's because. Oh. It's Jersey. Oh. <laughs> no one goes on vacation to Jersey. Well, except for one idiot, but uh, alas, he's an idiot. You know who I'm talking about. Anyway, the uh, the uh, dragon fire, the dragon whatever, the one with the, the dragon scepter and its crackle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was great. That was great. Uh, this is yeah. There's a whole bunch of. I mean, an hour. It doesn't overstay its welcome. That's for sure. Um. It's kind of like the right amount, I yeah. think, in length. Um, yeah, it, it was... I think overall, the whole thing was actually really well done. There mm-hmm. wasn't any really big... There was no three, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't any that just kind of went, uh, just made us dread yeah. the whole section. Um, I think there was maybe one or two that may have been a little longer than it needed to be, but... Yeah, some minor flat points here and there, but overall, I think this is one of the better ones. Oh, yeah, it was definitely one of the... Uh, one I of think, the upper, I think two, upper ones. I think two and... F- I guess two, f- five, and six, probably. Or probably up on the upper end. Uh, one is kind of the original, so it's like... Eh, but three is <laughs> kind of definitely the still the weakest. Four is probably the best, though. Oh, of course, <laughs> yes. Four are the best, obviously. I mean, Obviously. Yeah. Was there references to the regular car reviews? Too? Yeah, so there, was definitely, there was one that was regular car reviews. I remember that. That was great. That the, was, uh, track day, bro. <laughs> track day, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was, was regular car reviews. I remember that very distinctly. Uh, uh, they, uh, of course, uh, the, the shooting stars meme. Of course. Those were amazing. With the table. Yep. Um, Made something awesome out of a subpar episode. <laughs> yep. 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 Indeed. That was... Uh, an episode that wasn't great. Oh yes, friendship is manly again. In a sense, yep, although it wasn't sense. really, it was a little bit different. <laughs> although it was macho men, yeah, yeah, that was great. Uh, the actual ending, though, um, the credits that well, was. Um, they always the, have the big long credit scene. They do because they have a lot of stuff to to show credits. For. This one felt very final. Very final with you know the Celestia's ballad background thing. Yeah, um, all the, the things, and then look the back clips at the of all the old ones. Yeah, yeah. The ending song using that Porter Robinson song. It, it, it felt like okay. Very, it felt like a very much we're done. Yeah, this is over now for real. We're I don't, we're I, done. I don't know if it is or not, but that's really what it felt it like. It really did feel like I'm I, I'm like I'm content if that's it. Yeah, but. if that's where they decide to end it, if this is the last anthology, then I think it's an okay place to to end it. It's I definitely think it was anthology point. five. I think I remember saying or one of them. I remember saying it was something along the lines of a. Uh, Feeling like they're feel like they're starting to hit that wall of what they can do, but maybe this one proves otherwise. But it's kind of like maybe if they feel like they can't really make it go for anymore, this is this should be it. And if that's the case, that's the case. Yeah, I, I think it's the same thing I said last time. Don't they should not force themselves to keep going just because it's popular. If if they feel like they need to f- stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, and, and if you're gonna do it, go ahead. End on a high point. This is definitely one of those high points. Yeah. If you're gonna end on any episode, this is one of the good ones to end on. Mm-hmm. You've got the ending for it. That the ending credit really feels like it's wrapping things up. Yeah, I think so. It was enjoyable uh, it, for the most part. Again, I, a couple again, a couple flat spots, but it's your that, mileage is gonna vary. Yeah, that, things that's, we that's enjoyed, I enjoyed, or he enjoyed. Well, you might be things you don't like so much. Yeah, that's just how these things go. It's huge compilation, massive collaboration of multiple different things. You're just going to get that. That's just mm-hmm. the way it's going to be. That's but it. yeah, overall, this is definitely one of their better ones. All right, so moving on to the Request Your Girl shorts. There's a handful uh, aired between last recording and now. Um, we got three right now. In order of airing, there was Pet Project, Subs Rock, and Shake It Up. And I see uh, Alcatraz smiling over a certain title, which we won't get into because it's Full Paper's job. (laughs) Right, so the three of them. Pet Project. It was, well, basically made the best pet win except substitute Dash for Sunset and less um, demanding, shall we say. (laughs) And also shorter. 
<laughs> and songless. <laughs> and songless, yes. But yeah, basically the others all have pets. Sunset sees at first she doesn't want a pet, and then she's like, you know what? They're so cute. I want to pet myself. And then she goes and then and then she goes and sees and then Flush helps her out and then she settles on a lizard. He she calls her Ray. Him Ray. Because he's a ray he's a ray of sunshine. Yes. Should have been a ray of sunlight, but whatever. Yep, that's pretty much uh it's an interesting one. Uh it's kinda weird because uh Sunset has her uh, old outfit and her old hair, and yet Sidewise there. So um, a little bit of a model mix-up. Oops. Yeah, it's it's again it's Boulder, so yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if they just didn't have access. Possibly not did not have access to the newer puppet yet. But then again, they have Sidewise, so they should have. I don't know. I think they just was like, okay, this is the sunset, and they just didn't really pay attention really to uh, which one they're using because they didn't know better. Maybe. I don't just, know. Oh, it's sunset, so just use that one. So, oops. I don't know. So yeah, it was it was, was kind of nice. I guess we now I guess know who Sunset's pet is. Yep, Ray, Ray, Ray. the lizard. I'm oh no, uh, Gummy is not real in the <laughs> Cluster Girls world. Gummy's just a plush animal. Yep. Oh it no. Squeaks. Yep. What is life? <laughs> in another world, you're just a plush. Oh, oh no. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's fine. And the next one, uh, Subs Rock. It's basically Celestia's trying to be a substitute teacher and things keep interrupting and it's annoying. And then, yeah. By the time she gets all the interruptions cleared away, it's the end of class. Yep. That's pretty much it. That, that That's literally everything. And Twilight gets to be in charge while she's gone because, I don't know. Teacher's pet. Yep, I guess so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I suddenly have Van Halen playing in my head. <laughs> Hot for teacher. Oh, no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's pretty much just a, a principal trying to be a teacher, and she guess he likes teaching, and it, it, it is um referencing to the uh, Celestia's Lessons and Laughs set. Yeah, that toys that I reviewed a while back. Mm, yeah, mm, you know. Yeah, shameless watch self that. plug On the Pony 4 and one YouTube channel, just saying. <laughs> you, you know, you reviewed that set. But uh, then the other one that just aired recently was Shake It Up. It's Applejack doing a song about, I don't know, some sort of a smoothie place. That's what I'm guessing, it's smoothies. Yeah. Like smoothies. Or shake, yeah. Because they're not shakes, because there's no ice cream involved. Yeah, probably smoothies. Yeah. Or just juice. Yeah. Anyway, try. It was a nice song, actually. It was a nice song. It kind of reminded me of uh, cool and stuff like that. Late 80s, early 90s type stuff. Somewhere Sorta. in that somewhere in that range. I'm trying to figure that early two thousands pop. Maybe too early two thousands, but it's kind of older. Maybe late nineties. Somewhere in there. It's kind of a weird mix of all those kind of different pops and also kinda of has a weird country dish just because it's, it's Applejack. Apple Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was uh, this one is actually DHX proper, so Yeah. It was a fine song. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. It was actually um pretty good. The animation was good too. I, I liked all the little stuff. Mm. And they're saying all the, little, the the moves and stuff like that are very common for like uh, bartenders and stuff, which fits her name. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Applejack. Yeah. I know there's gonna be more shorts as time goes on throughout the month. Um, so uh, hopefully they keep uh being pretty entertaining. I mean, they're short, so it's not like oh no. Yeah. So there's that. And I guess that's uh, that for that. And not a whole lot to really say about them because they're so short. They are so short. They're shorts. Ah, right. Anyway, so moving on to um, the actual episode, and that is Fame and Misfortune. So as a quick synopsis, uh, Twilight, well, meets two fillies who are fighting, and because of that, she gets inspired to uh, release the collective friendship journal that her, she and her friends have made, and then everything goes wrong. And that's pretty much it, really. Everything goes wrong because all the ponies misunderstand the point of it. To give, uh, misunderstand the point of the journal. Uh, start arguing with each other. All sorts of crap. The main six are just in a disarray, upset. Just everything's gone wrong until they even try to convince the towns or all the ponies outside about this, all this stuff. And it still doesn't really work. And then eventually the two fillies from the beginning come back and like talking about how the journal really helped them work out their friendship problems and stuff. And because of that, it's like all worth it. And that's pretty much how it ends. This episode is... Uh, Interesting. <laughs> yes, that word is being trotted out again. Trotted out. Interesting. <laughs> this ep- 
episode is also kind of hard to like really get a good grasp of how to feel about it. I mean, there's yeah, the synopsis was really quick, but there's a lot of subtle almost take things. that. No, I, I, I it yeah, I would it, actually say that I, I'm not weird. certain I want to use that term. It's pointed. Well, uh, 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 it's pointed, but well, I don't take that feel... kind of the the um. It's the TV trope thing. Um, yeah, but we're saying using take, well, take that, that is what is hasn't... often reference is often referencing a what when the uh, creators of something kind of point at the fan base and show and say, hey, this is what you guys are doing. Yeah, but I, I feel and that that's the exactly what take this is that doing. is more has more of a malicious connotation. Well, to not the term. necessarily. It's a trope thing. So. I know it's a trope, but I don't. I, that's the name the, of the, the trope. The so, phrase. The phrase seems well, more. Well, the name malicious. of the trope. So that's what I'm using. Okay, so we'll use that, but I want to clarify that I don't believe this is malicious. Where take that does have more of a, a malicious connotation, that term does, that phrase. Right. But yeah, this is, it's pointed. It really is. And yeah, like, I'm not certain quite how I feel about it yet, because there's just a lot to process, and it's just going to take time to process that personally. Mm-hmm. Wow, this I was not expecting this. Right when I heard you know the synopsis of the episode, I think it was I think things are going to go a little bit differently. Differently, and I thought I figured there was going to be drama surrounding this episode just from the synopsis, but I thought it was going to be more like um, that one season one episode that everyone yeah. thought was pro religion. Yeah, I thought this was going to end up being the the opposite of that. Yeah, it's not. No, <laughs> it's definitely well, not. Depending on your definition of religion, in this case. <laughs> well, we're, we're so people are pretty Apple religious family. in their love of ponies. <laughs> we're, we're Apple family devotees, because <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah, so you there's, Apple admirers. Yeah, the Apple Apple family admirers. Yeah, yeah, there's a. It's just there's a lot of things that seem seem. I'm not going to officially claim it. It was. Because there's a lot of times we, we think things are, you know, aimed at us when they aren't. But it really does seem that there's a lot of things that are very particularly pointed at things that happen in the fandom. Some of the things I know for a fact are just oh, because yeah. they directly reference popular themes that have come up in the fandom. Uh-huh. But I don't Even think... Even ones we've said. Yeah. Uh, um, well, I mean, like, there's a whole... The one jumped out and asked if Applejack and Pinky are related or not. Yeah. That that was... Okay, that was definitely pointed at us, but that was more of a humorous one. Yeah. But then um, there's the one like... Um, Fluttershy. Fluttershy and, and her assertiveness. Continuously learning how to be assertive. same thing over and over again. And that, that's a, a complaint that we've done a few times, and that, that came up. It, Yeah, it, it's a tough one to take in. This episode is tough to take in. I'm not going to say it's wrong for it. Well, I'm also not going to say it's right. That's why it's not one. I'm just it, it's tough. That's what makes it tough. It's because I can't just say it's wrong. On one hand, right. yeah, it's I understand like kind of wanting to like well, but you know, guys don't know everything that's going on and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's like well, we're allowed to say I don't like it because of these things. So it's kind of weird when you hear this sort of criticism coming from the people. Uh, being criticized for criticizing it's kind of weird although i think i i think the the line is a little bit different uh most of the criticisms seen here in this episode are more of the baseless or just done wrong yeah. which they i mean, we can only see so many of things getting directed to them they see a lot more than we do F- getting directed by the fandom towards them than we do so i would probably assume the criticisms are worse than we think they're getting just because we don't we're not on the receiving end of it right so i think that's where some of that would come from where they do see a lot more of the the bad criticism i think that's more of where this is pointed to of course then there's the whole oh of course we don't think we're the bad criticism because who would ever think that they're the bad criticism well of course i always classify bad criticism basically you're being insulting or uh you don't really back up your criticism with anything you're just saying i don't like it right it sucks that's bad criticism because it doesn't really say anything about why you're anything it's just being insulting and whatnot that's versus uh, any good criticism would be basically you're trying to be constructive and you're trying to uh explain your reasoning in a well not necessarily positive but at least a uh non-aggressive manner yeah 
Yeah, cr- I like criticism. Think we mostly is... follow along that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes mostly, yes, passion does you... get into it, and you start saying things that get pretty aggressive. But yeah, it's only human. We're not perfect. That that was. I was yeah. How about, how about let's sh- shift gears a little bit um, <laughs> uh, and talk about things more on a surface level of the episode. Surface level. Um, we got too deep. <laughs> yeah, we, we just jumped right into that one because I mean, how can you not? Right to the deep end. How can you not with that? But yeah, otherwise, um, like flow and and story and writing for this episode, I think overall it was fairly fairly well done. Yeah, it was a pretty good episode. I mean, it was. Uh, I I will say overall. Ignoring it, all the weird things ignoring, <laughs> ignoring the, the daggers being thrown at me. Um, <laughs> it was actually really well done. Um, the flow was there. And you know what? I'm going to head this one off before you get to it. Starlight. Um, Starlight was in this episode, yes, and we don't yep. like Starlight, but I don't think she was a problem. Yeah, she wasn't too bad in this one. I, I don't think she was a problem really at all. Not too bad. Um, I mean, she didn't really play a huge part, which yeah, helps, was, actually. Yeah, it does but, help. That but what she did, it wasn't like it was, she was being forced. Although I still I feel, feel like I, she was I think that was the in. beginning with the whole the magic spells kind of like... Yeah, so she did like, fancy... Well, I mean, the, for again, me, it's she, just like that one of those feels like just one of those... She didn't need to be there for that part. I think everything else just finds that that one part she didn't really need to be there. But. Yeah, but it's not like she couldn't have been either. It wasn't like know. she was just, forced in. It didn't... But anyway, which way I feel like everything else is kind of like okay. She justifies her being there, I guess. But that one part, it's like, eh, she doesn't yes, really need to be there for that part. Yes, but it opened up for the joke. The whole, oh right, the manifesto. <laughs> she was a bad thing. person. Yeah, <laughs> the manifesto. Yeah, but like, just, yeah, that's, that's I, I, I don't feel thing, it, but, uh, like that. That just highlights a whole other thing. But anyway, we've gone over that I, million I, times I already. I think it's funny um, she was there. But yeah, other than that, I it was it, it flowed well. There yeah, it wasn't did. it didn't feel like there was any major pacing problems. There was actually in pretty good jokes in there too. Um, there was good dialogue, good little bits of character building too. Little bits of oh, insight yeah, onto definitely. the individual character of the main six. Two degree, yeah. What was it? Uh, also, even little callbacks to old stuff uh, oh, that they've I mean, done before. The whole thing was about the season four book. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All those. Yeah, but um, there's some, some little call- back beyond that, just kind of little things that you, like you might even notice type stuff. Like I noticed uh, at one point when Tyler's beating herself up over this because she's blaming herself for uh, this is all my fault. My friends, I ruined my friends' lives. And she's um, there's one point where um, she actually stops, does the breathing thing from way back when, and oh yeah, on, she goes, <gasps> and then goes on. It's like oh right, that that thing that was yeah, that's a thing. What was it? The uh. Oh, what the, the Phillies' names? Tularula. Tularula. That's that's, that's uh, a not old, an old unknown one. name. That's yeah, that's an old name from the old versions and the coconut yeah. cream. Uh, Tularula is played Alyssa Swales. Uh, Swales. Swales. One of those two. I'm going to go with Swales because <laughs> why not? And uh, Ein Sunder- Sunderland. I think it's Ein. A I N E. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, this episode was written by Emmy Larson as well. Sort of. Sort of. This is a he weird has, thing. Oh, uh, okay. He has writing credits. Quick. <laughs> sort of. I think it's on a technicality. There was an interview with him. Yeah, he a while talked back about he, he there was an about episode. It. He said it was an up- upcoming episode he has writing credit for, but he didn't really have much to do with it technically, and he's he t- seemed to try be trying to distance him, himself from it. Yeah, so I don't really want to call him the writer for this because obviously he doesn't only really want to be. All, so we don't know anything. Yeah, else. so we don't know who else was involved other than the editors were. So I'm guessing I guessing Lewis and Sanko did a, possibly did a lot of the heavy lifting in this episode then. Possibly. Because no one else is credited. If someone else was did a lot of work on it, they'd be credited, period. Yeah. It'd be a co-crediting versus a uh, just a single thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was just Emmy Larson credited. So it's likely, I mean, if he's saying he didn't do all, as much of the, that much of the work, that would possibly, probably mean Song Cone Lewis did a lot of the heavy And usually they have good episodes. And yeah, so this, it's interesting no, it's that we have... not necessarily a bad one. Well, either. I know, but it's, it's a bit interesting that he's wanting to distance himself from it. Yeah. I, I, maybe just he feels like he should. Maybe just simply just he feels like he didn't really do that much with it. Maybe yeah. just what it is. He just wants don't credit me. I didn't really do a whole lot with this one. Maybe yeah. just that's it. That's what it is. It could be this that. Could be that. I just know he wasn't exactly didn't sound the most happy. Yeah, I remember. The I heard and he did not sound thrilled with this um, being credited with this. So I I think there might be something else going on, but I don't want to speculate on it. Yeah. Too many ways I could go, and it could go very badly if I start. Yeah. Mm. Back to the episode itself, um, the song. We had a new song. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, but let's talk about it a little bit more. We are uh, not perfect. 
the song was actually really good. Yeah, I, nice I really like that. Us. We got a snippet of it from one of the um, commercials. Yes. And I do really like the song. Also nice visuals in it, too. It had really good visuals. It was, a nice, it was actually a really good song. This is a, and I also mentioned we only had three songs. Well, now we have four because I didn't see the episode yet when we were recording. Shh. Shh. <laughs> it's almost like we do things very specific way. Yeah, it's almost like we have a pattern to our recording yeah. sequences. So I guess this is the fourth song. I guess I'm understanding there's only one more than whatever that's going to yeah, be. Unless our count is off. Yeah, unless our count is off. Because we didn't actually go through and count how many yeah, songs. I'm pretty sure happened. this is number four of the season. We could be very wrong. And this one of them doesn't count for some reason, or we missed one. <laughs> someone will correct us. Uh, someone will. Someone it's will inevitable. correct us. Especially if it's on a YouTube yeah, surface level, it's a pretty good episode. It's just all it the is. stuff within is There's, just like, okay. Th- there are some daggers, though, that we have to figure out how we want to deal with. Yeah, it's like, um, because the knee-jerk reaction is, no. Yeah, And that that's a big thing. That's always a knee-jerk uh, reaction. Like I, I, started, I, I sort of brought up earlier with the criticism, no one ever thinks their criticism is wrong. Yeah. No one does. Because I mean, you you never, you never think that you're in the wrong. You never do. Yeah. I mean, that that's <laughs> cognitive dissonance tells you that you're always always in the Conversely, right. Conversely, that also goes for the creators as well. Yeah, but, because that's the thing is like, well, that's all why we've seen some creators act really poorly to some. Well, I'll be honest, like um, Dosudo. I remember I saw that. That was a long, the big thing. He reacted very poorly to criticism. Yeah, and he's, I mean, there. I saw some of the things like they're genuinely just kind of people asking kind of questions, like they're confused about something he wrote, and he just went blah at them. So, uh, it is possible to also think you're right and and being a creator and be completely wrong. So that's why this is kind of one of those you have to really sit down and think about this episode because like there's gonna be I, stuff. It's like yeah, I can understand kind of wanting to lash out, but at the same time, are they lashing out or is there they have an actual point? I don't think they're lashing out. I don't think this is an anger episode. This isn't them just no. trying to get... Uh, the, 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 what, like I said, I didn't want to use the take that. I don't feel like the connotation of the term, not the meaning of the, the trope. The connotation of the term is malicious and revengeful. And I don't think... Revengeance. <laughs> revengeance. <laughs> it's a good game. But yeah, I don't think that was the intent of it. I don't think this is a you know pent-up anger just know, lashing it, it, out it, it, there is the a lot fandom. of stuff in there though that does feel very much like a blatant reaction to things the fandom have done so some of them said, does but i think some of it is i mean there's even stuff like that one that one pony said i liked her better before she had wings which yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was so, the like, there are things that are definitely pointed at stuff that's happened in this fandom and i don't think that one was wrong <laughs> that one was a definite come on guys yeah, that was a very much. Come a, on, guys, <laughs> get over it. Um, but yeah, the other thing was just a lot of these ponies are arguing over basically who's the best one of the six, and it's like we do uh, that a lot. Yeah, but a lot of it's. I mean, a lot of us we're not really entirely entirely serious, but some people I know are being yeah, and dead I think serious. I think a lot of the more critical parts of this episode when they're actually you know intending a criticism is not against those who, are, who do it jokingly. No, no. It's, yeah. it's those who actually take it too far. Yeah. There's always, so, and every fan has that. Every yeah, fan has the guy does. or girl who takes things a little too or far. And groups everyone else of is people. Like, Maybe you should calm down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, my biggest worry is that this episode is going to cause a lot of the not me responses yeah. when it really is. I think it should be a point not where we should... Not all bronies. Not all bronies. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I think begins. this episode should... Re- I, I would hope... I don't think it'll happen, unfortunately, but I would hope this episode starts a lot of, you know, people stopping and, and looking back at themselves. Yeah. Some introspection. Uh, I think that's what the, sort of what the point... Part of the point is. I think there's a couple points or messages going on in this episode and one of them i i, I think it was one of the more subtle ulterior one is i hope people you know stop and think maybe maybe i am the baddie <laughs> are we the baddies <laughs> I, 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 i'm hoping that a lot of that is yeah. where, where they stop and go hey bit. wait a minute this this is actually something i'm guilty the other of. thing is I'm also wrong um here. i would also say caution against uh, going all or nothing type mentality as well because while you can also agree with some of the things they say in this you could also kind of disagree as well 
Yeah. Some of it. I mean, because that's another thing I've noticed in general. Sometimes people get a little all or nothing in this fandom. Yeah, uh, false dichotomies and, and such like that. Um, the all- particularly, it's been particularly bad with a certain character lately. All the all or nothing. I would say that. Just There's been a couple times where I've seen people kind of tell you, if you don't like the character, you should just stop watching the show. And I've yes. seen that. And it's like, No. <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. And that's that. the thing. It's it's and that's, that's another point. It's it's okay to criticize things you like. It's okay to not like certain aspects of something you generally do like. I it's part of criticism. Um, in general, it's like I like the show a lot. That's why we're doing a podcast about it. But at the same time, I'm not just going to accept absolutely everything that they throw out as as amazing. It's part of what we do. We talk about parts we do and don't like. We try to find positives about everything when we can. Usually we can find something we like. Like 99.9% of the time, there's that one that 0.1% we couldn't, but that happened. But for the most part, it's we are going to... We do like it. We do enjoy it. That's why we talk about it so much. And I think that's part of it is this the enjoyment thing. Is um, I think... You're supposed to enjoy it. Not nece- you're not supposed to necessarily rip it apart. If you get to the point where you are just ripping apart everything about it, you need to step back and look and ask yourself if you really are a fan anymore. And I'm not just not, I'm not just, I'm trying to invoke the only you know, only true fans or whatever. Yeah, don't. That's that because. Be bad. But there's a point is if you are finding it, you're just watching it out of some sort of obligation. Are you really enjoying it anymore? Yeah, are you watching it because you enjoy it, or are you watching, watching it, so, it to give you something to rip apart? Yeah, if you're why now watching, what do you it, enjoy just, more, the show or ripping the show apart? Yeah, if you're if you're now watching it out of the, out of this um, desire to just tear it apart, then then you probably should test step back and go, hey, why am I watching this still? And to add on to a couple of points you said on kind of flip side, um, like I was mentioning, there's a couple messages in this episode. Mm-hmm. One of the other ones, especially the big song, they make mistakes. Yeah. And just they because do. someone makes a mistake... I hope someone was fired for that blunder. <laughs> Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, just because someone makes a mistake doesn't mean you should just write them off. Oh, no. Um, there, there is a message of forgiveness going on in there. Yeah. And also the idea that mistakes make them real. Yeah. There's, there's a whole bunch of things. So, yeah, even if you don't like an, a certain character or I if know. they've made mistakes, it, it, things can... It, it, you shouldn't just write them off. Well... In one episode, it, but it's been yeah, I mean, and overall, <laughs> it's one of those. There's, there's a lot going on in this episode. Um, there's a lot of messages, and there's a lot of things that people should really take to heart. And it, it, like I said, it's going to take even me. I can't speak for Nemesis over here. It's going to take a while to really, fully process this episode. Yeah, um, a little bit. That and it just takes me time to really process them anyway. That's why we talk about them immediately. <sighs> <laughs> Which so, so, sometimes that kind of sucks. Some people don't don't really process things that quickly. You can't just get an immediate reaction. If you want a real one, you've got to got to work on it for a little bit. Talk know. about it with other things to really fully finalize your feelings. I know, but that's what those end caps yeah. are for. That's what our end cap lists are for. Because then we can go back and really finalize our feelings. Because it's been like several weeks. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it's, it's, this is a tough episode of process. Um, I think we're going to be coming back to this one a lot. This is definitely one that I think the fandom at large, it, this is going to be a thing. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see the reactions to this one. It's yeah, kind of, I haven't seen them people, yet. We, I just I can imagine some people are just going to be super angry about this episode because uh, I, they I feel can, personally attacked. I, I, there's going to be a massive divide of people that are going to be arguing with each other over this particular episode, which yep. is going to be somewhat ironic and somewhat sad because that's exactly what happened in this episode. Yeah. There, there's going to be a lot that are going to be, that, that feel personally attacked about the, from this episode and are going to start lashing out. And there's going to be an opposite side of that who are going to see this and lash back. Saying you know with complete anger and vitriol, saying no, you're you're the the wrong in the ones in the wrong here, and I'm the ones in the right, and not see, realize that they're doing the same similar thing. There's a whole thing about how well the brains work, human brain works regarding criticism and whatnot. How basically human brain brain reacts to criticism the same way it does to a physical attack. Yes, it literally does that chemically. It, does the exact same thing. It goes, hey, whoa, someone just hit me. Yeah, 
And so it lashes out because someone just hit you. Right? 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 And it's really hard to stop that. It is. Because you're basically over trying to overcome a biological thing. Yeah. That is hardwired into you. Yeah. It's uh, and this episode is gonna gonna set that off for a lot of people. Um. So really, uh, I think one uh, I I mentioned it before, but the thing I, I hope people take from this, basically, step back and think. <laughs> if you feel like this is a personal attack, or if, if you feel like, it, or if you ever get the idea, no, this isn't me. I'm better than that. Think again. Really, and you you might be right. You might be on on the right side of things, but I think you need to think about it. No one here should immediately say, "This isn't." I'm better than that. Yeah. Everyone, everyone should go. I might not be better than that. This might be something I need to deal with, and really give it a hard look. And you might come out on the better side of that. You may truly be on, be doing things right. But yeah, it's. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. But overall, I do think this was a really well done episode. Yeah. Um, but it's going to cause a lot of consternation friction. with it's going a to lot cause of friction, ironically. Lot of things. Yeah. Ironically, it's going to cause friction, even though that's all about yeah, everything is about. But um, yeah, it was an enjoyable episode to agree. It's just an episode that's going to take a while for us to really uh, process, I guess, uh, what our final thoughts on it. By, we'll get to it by the, um, <laughs> by the end of the season. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> things will be there. Unless we're just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> just, just put it here on the list, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, um, we need to move on because we are starting to go pretty yeah, long. So um, we'll go ahead and get to band content. And of course, we start off with music. Yes, uh, I have got two songs to feature this week, and we'll just jump right in. The first one is Mantle Gin's Fly In. This is a really happy, bouncy song, and it's it's just really good. I love just how bouncy and happy it is. Makes you kind of want to move along with it. At some points, it kind of the melody kind of reminds me of some old Caden L. Welburn songs, old mm. old stuff. Mm. But yeah, I, I thought it was really good. Though I think a couple points using the overused "hey" voice that like every song uses is a little bit overdone. But right. meh, it's fine. Really yeah. good. It's happy and bouncy, and uh, honestly, that's all I could really think of to say for, about it. It's just not that it's bad. It's just I'm having a hard time really saying anything other than it's happy and bouncy. It's happy. It's bouncy. It's fun. You should I, go listen I to it. I feel like I messed up somewhere if I because that's all I can think of to say about it. Really, no. I, there's no lyrics. It's an instrumental. And it's so. not, again, it's not bad. I liked it. It's just you get songs like that. It's a fun tune. It's it's happy. It's bouncy. It's good to listen to. It's off of a. F- short ep that mantle gen just put out i would recommend going getting the whole thing there's some good songs on there go check that one out the next one i have is hope shines eternal remixed by protocat This is probably my favorite of the two. <laughs> I love what Protocat did with the vocal chops on this one. The the pitch changes, up pitch chopping. It's it's really good. I love the intro in this, how it starts off slow and almost airy mm-hmm. before things build a little bit. It's got this, like I said, airy and almost hopeful and uplifting tune throughout the whole whole song. And then when the bass jumps in after the intro, it's really nice and smooth. I I just really really like this remix. It might be a little bit long. It's like six 
and a half minutes long, but the this has a slow breakdown bit in the middle that it does keep it from getting too repetitive. Right. It's really good. Yeah. Like you said, it's it starts off pretty light. Um, it, it's time it's like it's a remix. It's you can tell what it remixes, but it it very very ba- very barely resembles the original song in some ways. Some ways though, it reminds me of the song Sticker Brush Symphony from uh, Donkey Kong Country Two. You have no idea, but trust a lot of no people idea. go, oh yeah, that song. It kind of reminds me of that at times, particularly in the beginning. And then other times, it kind of reminds me of the kind of soundtrack you heard from Forza Horizon, like um, particularly when you first start up the game. That kind of which horizon <laughs> any <laughs> yeah they have they always have a very specific style of song for the one you like start up like the intro song for yeah. those games and it has very much sounds like it could be an intro song for one of those games i just know one of them i think horizon yeah. one used porter robinson's language yeah well, three of them they yeah, like, use very similar types types ty- styles yeah. so there's that yeah it's good i really like this. it one. is a good one i really do it's also pretty long like I said, it's six and a half minutes long, yep. but it doesn't get repetitive because yeah. it does have a break in the middle. Yeah. So that's that for music. Yep. I do have a fanfic. This is the one I told you I had in waiting because it was a long episode last week. This one's called Spark Visions of Twilight by Tangerine Blast. And if you remember back to season five finale when Twilight went to that Nightmare Moon reality where she was in charge. Yeah. The dash there went, hey, I know that pony. And that's where it starts off, basically. It's just we're seeing, um, well, a Dash who's kind of, you know, part of Nightmare Moon's little guard and everything. And we see her and Pinky and all that stuff. And they kind of start getting together. And start, she's like, this is weird because I've, I've seen that alicorn before. I'm, I've, or I've seen her before. So they basically kind of comes down to trying to find her. And they find the rebellion and everything. And stuff kind of goes crazy. And I don't want to get, you know, too super in-depth on that, that stuff because, you know, spoilers and all that. But... Stuff does happen, and it's actually a pretty fun thing when you see eventually see all the characters you start expecting to see, you know, all the main six start showing up in some way or another. You find out what happened to uh, Cadence, and just, it's actually a pretty interesting little story just about, what okay, a plausible what would happen if um, Nightmare Moon did win, but then someone else kind of from the outside kind of came in and disrupted all of it accidentally without even meaning to. It's actually, I actually thought it was a pretty nice read. It's, um, how many chapters is it about? It's a lot of chapters, like 40 something thousand words. Yeah, it's 47,376 words. It's like 14 chapters or something like that, including the epilogue. It started way back in December in, uh, 2015 and just got finished recently. So, yeah, it's a pretty interesting read. read. Yeah, it, it was interesting. I get, you fo- did another Dash focused episode. I'm, I'm surprised. It was mostly Dash. It wasn't entirely Dash yeah. focused. It did switch characters a few yeah. times. Also, this was another one I, I kind of had. My, I kept seeing, and I only started reading it recently. And then the last two chapters uploaded right after I started reading. It's like, oh, perfect, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about our curse. <laughs> yeah, it's. I like some of the things that it did. I like that. Um, I had words I was gonna say. Uh, one thing, Dash's introspection. I, I kind of like how they did Dash for the most part. She has those introspective moments that I, I really do like. Some of the things that she tells herself sound awfully familiar, personally. So that that definitely gave it props there. Uh, there's a couple points that I felt may have been a little bit rushed or or kind of glossed over. A couple almost but not quite Deus Ex moments. Right. Um, I wasn't entirely certain about a certain uh, villain near the end. Mm. I wasn't entirely certain about about that. Right. Interesting, I wasn't exactly sold on Twilight hmm. through it. I wasn't exactly sold. I think it could have used more, a little bit more on her, just in general, flesh her out, because she was kind of threadbare. She didn't get a lot of screen time. I was expecting more. But I think my biggest complaint about this entire thing the author called them Thestrals. They're not Thestrals. They're bat ponies. Thestrals are something from Harry Potter, and they're skeletal horses that are actually really nice, but can only be seen by those who have witnessed death. They're not bat ponies. The only thing similar is leathery wings. <laughs> oh, well. They're not Thestrals. <laughs> okay, nerd. I'm sorry. But okay, that was nerd. Just, uh, <laughs> Go be a nerd somewhere else. Um... But my one job thing, is to be a nerd here. Somewhere else now. Anyway, uh, one thing I actually did like was the little um, 
the thing they did with pink uh they did with pinky in this fic was oh, a lot, yeah, a lot of good stuff initially pinky. the beginning was stuff i don't want to again don't i can't get too yeah, far i don't want to it, spoil but, but there's some they did some the author did some really good stuff with pinky i feel in this effect I, um, yeah i, I don't again, like the ending i don't want to get too um spoilery but the ending i like it in the sense that it's a very personal end in the sense that it doesn't wrap up everything cleanly to yeah agree. It, it, it does leave a lot of stuff like a lot of questions unanswered, which is kind of intentional because those not, are not important to the characters. And I really like how they did that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, my uh, fic recommendation for this week. Go check that out. Should take you a couple hours or a couple days, however long it takes you to read this sort of stuff. I did it in one sitting. Yeah. So Actually, that is. Two, but whatever. That is the end of this podcast. So. At least this episode. This, ep- yes, <laughs> this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed if you want to listen to past and future episodes as well, you can go to pony411.libsyn.com. Again, it's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. You can also go to iTunes and search for Pony411 and rate and review there. You could go to Google Play at play.google.com slash music and search for Pony411 there and subscribe and whatnot. It's still also rating and whatnot. You can also go to Stitcher, stitcher.com or the iOS or Android it. Android apps and search for, of course, Pony411. There's also youtube.com slash Pony411. You can like, comment, subscribe there, and also watch our little reviews of toys and whatnot. We have just recently released a whole bunch of movie stuff and new Equestria Girls minis as well. More will be coming throughout this coming week as well because we got a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> you do. Stuff's been coming out. We've been buying it. Yep. Because <laughs> Hasbro work mate was smart. They Buy our toys. Okay. okay. <laughs> sure. Yep. <laughs> There's all that did. stuff. And of course, you can find us on PonyvilleLive.com. That's the same as YouTube, but it's there as well, as well as reviews and whatnot. And there's, of course, Ponyville FM every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, you can contact us in many ways. There's, of course, email. Pony411podcast at gmail.com. Comments, critis- criticisms, questions. Talk. Tell us about this episode. This one is a weird one. This one, yeah, I would love to hear um, your opinions on mm-hmm. this one as long as you're not <laughs> just yelling at us yes or rant yeah um but yeah it's, it's an interesting episode it's going to get a lot of uh, different reactions i think so uh why not uh i'd love to hear them yeah there's also facebook.com slash pony one you could like us there and uh, new episodes show up there as well um hopefully in the next week i'll be able to get the trot con pictures uploaded there I keep forgetting to do that i sent them to you a while I know. ago i got get them there i just throwing up on my own twitter I've been review video with review stuff okay <laughs> that's been taking up a lot of time that's kind of more of a priority right now <laughs> Anyway, there's also Twitter. We're at Pony411. That's our usual nonsense um, receptacle. Or some nonsense receptacle. <laughs> Depository. <laughs> and you're like, repo- oh, no, no. <laughs> Not a suppository. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's that. And, of course, our personal Twitters. I'm at Nemesis Prime one He's at Alcatraz with seven seven t and an underscore at the end. Yep. We've been tweeting about stuff, I guess. I and, don't think I have yeah, been. I've been tweeting about toys and whatnot and... Uh, other opinions <laughs> opinions yes good opinions i feel but whatever i don't know my opinion I would, I would concur with yours <laughs> anyway so uh, that's that uh tune in next week we'll be talking about triple threat yes uh spike and ember and thorax oh boy more political things <laughs> just we'll see how that different goes different political things it's spike so um, we'll the see spike how episode so it we'll could go that. a number he of ways he was absent this episode actually huh he was absent this episode actually yes he was absent how about that? Anyway, he's coming next week. So, uh, hope you see you then. And, well, well, hope I hope you I don't in- see you. That you would be creepy. I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> so, hope you tune in. And until next time, though, uh, please pony responsibly. Please. See ya.